Good evening, and thank you for having me. Can you get your microphone? Oh, sure. Here are our disclosures, none pertinent uh, to this talk. So, a poem has gained traction as a minimally invasive treatment for achalasia. Uh, and at Bay State Medical Center, we performed this as a single surgeon endoscopist team in the operating room under general anesthesia. In our series from 2011 to current, we have over 150 cases and have adopted routine use of endoflip as an intraoperative adjunct. Our motivation for this case is actually an, an early patient, a 64-year-old male with achalasia who had a cardiac arrest during the procedure. This was after the submucosal tunnel had been dissected, but before the myotomy had been created. Uh, with the help of anesthesia, he was resuscitated, and in the six months of follow-up that we had him, he had complete resolution uh, of his symptoms, which asked the question, what is the role uh, of the submucosa? And we hypothesized that the submucosal tunnel actually played a role in the therapeutic benefit of POEM and that we could capture this with endoflip. So this is sort of our POEM paradigm and, and endoflip uh, paradigm here. Starting with the 60th case, we started collecting diameter and distensibility index uh, both preoperatively and postoperatively. And beginning with the 107th case, we started to collect these same metrics uh, at the time point between the creation of the tunnel, but before the myotomy. Uh, there were 66 patients included, uh, 42 of which had preoperative and postoperative data, and 24 actually included that intermediate time point after the creation of the tunnel. And what we found was when we compared the pre-tunnel to post-tunnel patients, uh, to the groups who had uh, the whole uh, preoperative and postoperative, there was no difference. This was the same group of patients. Uh, and then when we compared the pre-tunnel to post-tunnel uh, diameter uh, and distensibility index, what we found was actually a median increase in diameter of 2.15 centimeters and a median increase in distensibility index of 1, uh, which were statistically significant. When we assessed the overall contribution uh, of the tunnel to the whole procedure, which included the myotomy, we found that there is a 38% diameter increase and a 30% median distensibility increase. This is kind of a limited study. We're a single center and a single team. Uh, we're a small series, and we don't really have long-term follow-up data uh, or, or a clinical correlation to what these metrics actually mean in terms of patient symptoms. Uh, but our endoflip data does sort of suggest that, yes, the submucosal dissection itself does, in fact, have an impact. Uh, this sort of challenges the null hypothesis that says most of the therapeutic benefit lies in the myotomy and, you know, shows that the pre-tunnel and post-tunnel conditions are actually two separate entities and that while not statistically significant, the contribution of the tunnel dissection to the overall procedure isn't zero. Um, this does sort of highlight the complex pathophysiology of achalasia and possible uh, involvement of, of submucosal fibrosis, um, but also has implications for our role of the tunnel itself as a therapeutic target. In, in conditions of connective tissue disorders such as scleroderma. Uh, this is early data and we do have a, probably a lot more questions than we do answers at this point. Uh, and we're looking forward to kind of looking at our ongoing uh, post-operative follow-up and correlating these with, with longer-term clinical outcomes.